Let's talk about Apple using custom processors in the MacBook line. How is this gonna work? What might it look like and when's it gonna happen? This video is sponsored by PDF Element for Mac, which allows you to create and edit PDFs straight from Microsoft Office or other file types, convert PDFs into Microsoft Office formats, and even edit scanned documents by converting them into PDFs, all right from your Mac. Check out the link in the description below to access a free trial of PDF Element today. Okay, so it's no secret that Apple has been mulling over switching to their own processors for a very long time. Seriously, a very, very long time. The rumor mill started churning that Apple was gonna ditch Intel in like 2010, 2011 with the A4 chip, which was the first chip that they designed and put in an iPhone. So yeah, this is no secret. But now we're talking about within two years of a MacBook running an Apple designed processor and it's getting serious. Intel themselves pretty much confirmed that Apple is ditching Intel by 2021. So this is this is happening, people. This is not just like a oh maybe someday when the when the technology catches up. Oh maybe eventually. No, this is real. Okay, so let's talk about why. Why would Apple want to ditch Intel? Intel has good processors, right? Why would you Why would you want to have your own? Well. If there's one thing that everyone can agree on about Apple, it is that they absolutely love optimization. They've never really been, you know, put the most amount of hardware in a computer and sell it. They have always been very meticulously and carefully designed, whether you agree with their choices or not, and sort of eke the most performance out of their specific hardware that they have. So when they're able to design their own processors, they can do that to an extreme. The current A12 Bionic chip and presumably upcoming A13 Bionic chip in September are incredibly specialized devices. We're talking uh, eight cores and then there's certain cores that are meant for efficiency and certain cores that are meant for power. All of this is meant to make the processor efficient and powerful and optimized to run Apple software, which of course an iPhone and a Mac will do. So there's another reason that Apple would want to use their own processors, and that is, of course, having control over when those processors are announced. Apple, as it is, relies on a lot of other manufacturers for their components. They rely on Intel for CPUs. Currently, they rely on AMD for GPUs, although they should rely on Nvidia as well, but that's not gonna happen. So there have been plenty of GPUs that came out for the Mac from AMD before they came out anywhere else. like. The Vega 48 that you see in my iMac was pretty much designed, put right in the iMac, and that was the first time that anyone had access to that GPU. However, Intel doesn't really operate like that, so if Intel doesn't have the chips, then Apple doesn't get them. From late 2013 all the way until 2016, when the Touch Bar generation came out, Apple used Haswell processors in three consecutive updates of the 15-inch MacBook Pro, because there just weren't newer processors that were really available. Now granted, Apple has also been slow on the uptake here. The 2016, 17, 18, and now 19 MacBook Pros have all been sort of late to the game in terms of adopting the newest processors right when they come out. That just doesn't happen. But that's not how Apple operates. They like to have control over their manufacturing process for better or for worse. So if Apple has complete control over the processors going into their MacBooks, there's gonna be a lot more regularity in the MacBook upgrade cycle. Take a look at the iPhone. The iPhone has come out in September for nine consecutive years without fail. It has been September, 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 September. Always without fail because they've been relying on their own chips and they have a cycle and they're not waiting on anyone for new chips to come out. So having these custom chips would be a huge benefit for Apple in terms of optimization and their upgrade cycles. All right, so let's talk about when all of this is gonna happen because we're now at the point where it's a matter of when, not if, but we don't know when. Now, there are a couple of MacBooks which I think are ripe for an ARM takeover, namely the 2017 MacBook, the 12 inch MacBook, which hasn't been touched in over two years at this point. WWDC 2017 was the last time that computer was updated and it has never 
been redesigned. It came out in April of 2015, and it has not changed at all since then in terms of design. So to me, this is the perfect first step into adopting custom processors onto the Mac range. It's already a low power fanless design. Honestly, they could probably port the A12X Bionic directly from the iPad Pro. Obviously it would have to be different so that it could run Mac OS, but it's more than powerful enough to run Mac OS. You just whoosh, whoosh, put it in the MacBook, thin out the bezels, there you go. Okay, well, it's not gonna be that simple, but you know what I mean. Personally, I could actually see that happening this year. I think it's possible. I know I talked about in my last video, a potential 16 inch MacBook Pro this year, an ARM MacBook coming out towards October of this year. That seems possible, especially since we just had that leak the other day with these seven new MacBook models being introduced in the EU. That definitely points to an imminent release. The thing is though, is Mac OS ready for that? They didn't really talk about at WWDC with Mac OS Catalina. They didn't talk about any sort of bringing Apple custom chips over to the Mac OS. Obviously this project Catalyst, which sort of blends applications and Xcode and Swift UI across those many different platforms that they have going on here. But they didn't really say anything explicitly like, okay, this is our next step towards getting our own processors in a MacBook. So we don't know if that's gonna be possible. But let's say that it is. Let's go over a hypothetical best case scenario in terms of swift adoption of custom processors in the Mac and how that would look. So here's the way that I could see it. October 2019, 12 inch MacBook with ARM based Apple processor is announced. This is gonna be very similar to probably the A13 processor that's gonna come out in September. A13X Bionic, something like that. A little bit more beefy than what we currently have, certainly enough to run Mac OS and is definitely gonna be more powerful than the KB Lake, Amber Lake, whatever it is, those little tiny weak Intel chips that are currently in the MacBook. Certainly gonna be better than those. So that's gonna come about October. Then we fast forward to next year, WWDC 2020, new design of the MacBook Pro. This, I could see this happening in WWDC because the original Retina MacBook Pro was WWDC 2012 and the 2016 came out in October. So with this time scale, I think WWDC would make the most sense. So now we've got a new MacBook Pro range, 13, 15, 16.5 inch, or maybe a 14 and a 16 inch. Who knows? We won't get too much into that. I had a video on that last week, but those would then have custom Apple processors probably, I would imagine, a lower TDP part than what they currently use, which are like 28 and 45 watts. So lower TDP than those, but very good performance as we've seen from Apple's custom chips. So then that would be updated. We'd have the MacBook and the MacBook Pro. I think some point during 2020, the MacBook Air would get refreshed with processors, probably not a new design, but new processors that would fit it somewhere in between the low power MacBook and the MacBook Pro. Then I think the next logical thing to be updated would be the iMac actually. This might not be until like the end of 2020, but this design is old. This is a seven year old design. It hasn't changed in that amount of time, which is pretty bananas. So I could see a redesign being held off until we have the processors, the custom Apple processors that would be, of course, much more powerful because, I mean, a Core i9-9900K has like a 95 watt TDP. So this would be a high performance part that would be going in some of these higher end iMacs. So that would be a little bit later in the development cycle once Apple has proved that they can scale up their own processors. Because, of course, all we've had now are iPhones and iPads, which are very low watt parts, they're fanless. They need to prove that they can scale those up to laptops and then desktops. So I could see that happening. One thing that I can't see happening anytime within the next couple of years is the real true workstation parts, like the Mac Pro or even the iMac Pro. I think those are gonna be sticking with Xeons for five years, probably because that's sort of a different class of product for Apple. Granted, the i9-9900K 
and some of those lower tier 8 core Xeons are really, really close right now. But I think for Apple, as far as they're concerned, I couldn't see that happening. I think that Xeons, the real workstation stuff is probably going to stick with Intel for quite some time. Speaking of IMAX, wakey, wakey. Now, the, the one thing that I can't really reconcile is that new leak with the seven models of MacBook. That is a lot of MacBooks to register all at once. And it kind of does make me wonder, are we going to see a full redesign of the MacBook and the MacBook Pro and a new 16 inch MacBook Pro this year? That's a lot of MacBooks to be registering if they're not gonna do anything with it. So I don't know, it might happen. I'd, if they're if they're gonna be doing that much this year, I don't think it would be ARM. That's the thing. I don't think they would use their custom chips in a MacBook Pro this year. That seems way too soon to be doing something like that. But, and then that opens up the other door, which is if you're gonna be refreshing or redesigning the MacBook Pro this year, like a 16 inch MacBook Pro that I talked about last week where I was talking about 10 nanometer Intel, it would be weird to redesign the MacBook Pro with 10 nanometer Intel and then like a year later, just be like, eh, never mind. We don't need Intel anymore. We're gonna use our own stuff. It, it would, it's, the timing is definitely funky here. And if I may call back to my previous video, the 16 inch MacBook Pro video, go watch it if you haven't. I was talking about how the timing was already funky with 9th gen and 10th gen and like a, a MacBook Pro coming out this year probably wouldn't even be in time for 10th gen. So it would run 9th gen and then next year they'd have a redesign, but not like a spec bump. It, it's very funky the way this timing works out. Now, typically when there's a lot of funky stuff going on with Apple, what they like to do is just, well, not do anything and just wait. So I don't know. It's entirely possible that we could be waiting until October of 2020 to see anything. That's fully possible. We could be waiting until the next version of Mac OS, the 2020 Mac OS to see an ARM MacBook and then have Intel in 2020 and then switch to ARM in 2021. I could see that being possible, but all of the recent indications have been that ARM custom Apple processors are coming soon. We don't know how extensively, it could just be that, that MacBook. Could be the MacBook for the next two or three years, that's the only one using Apple processors, and then they start going to the MacBook, the, the Pro and the Air and the iMac and all that stuff. That could happen too. Man, I just wish that we could find out. So we'll probably have to wait until October of this year at the earliest to find out. Basically, if we're not getting anything by October of this year, then wait until March, wait until June of 2020, essentially, because Apple has very slow update cycles. Right, so that's gonna do it for today's video. Hopefully you found this interesting. Make sure to leave a comment down below. Do you think that switching to ARM would be a good idea for Apple or do you think that's a bit foolish? Let me know down in the comments below. As usual, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Luke Miani. Please consider joining my subreddit if you have any questions. And as usual, I'll see you in the next one.